Amen. So a little bit of review uh, from chapter 21 from um, last time that we were in the book of Acts. Last week we took a diversion. We were teaching about the need to learn and witness. But tonight we'll be back in the book of Acts. In, in chapter 21, we had uh, learned that Paul went to Caesarea where Philip the evangelist lived. This is the same Philip that we can read about in the book of Acts chapter 6. Okay, he was one of the uh, deacons that was chosen out along with Stephen. Okay, we're going to learn a little bit more about him uh, or the situation with him tonight. Okay, so uh, he was one of those that were the seven that were chosen out. He was a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. And we see here, you know, years later, he's still serving God. Okay, and now, now he's uh, no longer... Uh, just uh, there serving Peter and the other apostles, but he himself is an evangelist and he even has daughters that prophesy. Okay, so he's uh, growing in God and still serving God. And thank God that we can do that too. We can grow in God and continue to serve God throughout our life. Amen. Yes. So, and then we also saw that there was a, a man by the name of Agabus that came from Judea to Caesarea, and he gets there, and he tells Paul that he is going, Paul is going to be bound when he makes his way back to Jerusalem, okay, so he's going to back, go back to Jerusalem, God's uh, directing him there, but when he gets there, Agabus lets him know that he's going to be bound, and this goes right along with what the Lord had been showing Paul during this time, God had slowed him down. Remember, he wanted to be there by uh, Pentecost. Okay, but uh, there were some delays, and uh, some of that was directed by the Lord. Some of it, uh, some of his acquaintances, some of his brothers and sisters of the Lord, knowing that he was going to be bound, knowing what awaited him, didn't want him to go. Okay, but eventually it gets to the point where he goes anyway because it's time to go. Okay. And uh, it's the right time. Okay, so uh, he makes his way back to Jerusalem. And he begins to report what God had done on the third missionary journey. Now, we know churches were established in Asia, Macedonia, Greece. Okay. And uh, people were one to God. God was blessing. Okay. And he, he, he uh, lets the apostles know about this. And they began to tell him about the Jews, thousands of Jews that had gotten saved. And they, if you remember where we finished off, they persuaded Paul. He had taken a vow in St. Korea. We believe it was a Nazarite vow where he would let his hair grow out, certain things he would not eat. Okay. And uh, they, they persuade him along with some other men that had taken a vow to purify themselves, and to end their vow according to the customs of the Jewish people because one or some of the things that the Jewish people were criticizing Paul uh, about was that he was teaching people not to keep the law uh, and he was not following the customs of the Jewish people. And in order to uh, take away some of this, this uh, criticism, they... Uh, persuaded Paul to go ahead and end his vow, go to the temple to purify himself with these other men that had also taken a vow to show that he wasn't against the law, he wasn't against the customs of the Jewish people. And we read to you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 9 where Apostle Paul said, I become all things to all men okay, that I might save some. Okay, and This is what he was doing. We also gave you the example of how that Timothy was circumcised. Okay to not that circumcision saves you, not that keeping the customs of the Jews saves you, but it made it uh, more productive for them to reach out to people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what Paul was doing. Okay, and uh, he, he's uh, there in the temple, okay, with, with these Jewish men about to, about to finish this vow and coming to the end of the time of the uh, purification. Okay, there at the temple. And uh, near the end of this purification process, while 
he is in the temple with these other men, they are attacked by the Jews from Asia. It wasn't the Jews from Jerusalem initially, many of them uh, returning to the Lord, as, as the other apostles had told him. Okay, but it was the Jews from Asia that were following him around. Okay, wherever he would go, they would come. Also remember, uh, go back and, and some of the things that we learned in the third missionary journey, how they followed him from city to city. Okay, so this is what happened. They followed him. They attacked him there uh, in the temple. And they were accusing him of polluting the temple because it was a brother that was with him. They saw this brother in Jerusalem with him. And they just assumed because he was with Paul and he was a Greek that he was in the temple with Paul. But the Bible doesn't tell us that. Okay, they came to that assumption. Really, they were just looking for a way to find fault with the apostle Paul. Okay, so now we want to begin. We're about where we left off. We're in verse 30 of Acts chapter 21. And we're going to begin reading there. Okay, now they're in the temple. They come, they, they come to get him. Okay, uh, and all the city was moved and the people ran together and they took Paul okay, and drew him out of the temple and forthwith the doors were shut. Okay, they shut the doors of the temple. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar who immediately took soldiers, the, the, the uh, chief captain of the band of, of, of uh, soldiers, took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating, they left beating of Paul. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is kind of timely. He's sharing how God blessed on that missionary journey. Okay. They're sharing how God had been blessing in Jews in Jerusalem returning to the Lord. Okay. And then we begin to have this uproar. And we've shared with you many times. Okay, God blesses. We're not trying to give glory to the enemy, but the enemy messes. Okay, it's just the way that it goes. You know, we're getting ready to have a revival yes. in just about a month. It begins on the 14th uh, of September. Reverend Love will be here preaching for about a week, not quite a week, from Tuesday to Sunday. Okay, and then right after that, we're going to conference. Yes. Okay. And uh, it's going to be a good time. We're going to get blessed there. Well, what always happens before conference, before revival or something like that? The enemy begins to mess. Right. He begins to try to stir things up. We have to realize that for what it is. Okay, just keep on uh, doing right, loving one another, serving God. Okay, not listening to to the, the lies of the enemy. Okay, because God's got a blessing in store for all of us. Okay, well, this is what happening. It was happening. God was blessing, and the devil was messing, and these people uh, came down there to find fault with Paul. And uh, as we read to you, okay, they weren't just finding fault with him; they're trying to kill this man. Okay, and they were setting others in an uproar. Paul was uh, really—they were in the process of beating this man to death. What they were doing, they're trying to kill him. Okay, they they uh, were beating him, and thank God, the leader of the the uh, Roman soldiers, the, the chief captain, came down there with his soldiers and centurions. And when the people saw it, they saw him coming with the troops. They stopped beating him. Okay, now you can maybe picture that in your mind. Okay, something's taking place. You know, maybe modern day we would think. Well, yeah, this was happening, then the police came, and they took off. Mm -hmm. A scenario like that. You can see that happening there in the streets of Jerusalem. Okay, it really happened. It was not, this is not some uh, parable. This is not just a story. Okay? This is an event that actually took place. They were actually in the process of killing this man, okay, for preaching the gospel. We go on now into verse 33. Let's begin reading there. We're in Acts chapter 21. Verse 33. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and, de and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried one thing and some another among the multitude. And when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, 
he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after crying, away with him. That's like what they told Jesus, isn't it? Okay, away with him. Okay, so, uh, or said to Pilate concerning Jesus. Okay, so the leader of the Roman soldiers had Paul chained to uh, by each wrist to a soldier. So he had a soldier on either side of him and he chained from each, each wrist to them. And he inquired of who Paul was and what he had done. I mean, maybe he thought, man, this guy must be some devil. He must be some wicked criminal. They're beating him to death. Man, what did he do? And he had his own ideas about it. We'll read about that in just a moment. Okay. And the leader uh, of the uh, uh, Roman soldiers, okay, he, he <clears throat> listened to the different things that were said, and there were different stories from different people. Okay, now when that happens, okay, you know, hey, wait a minute. I need to back off here. I'm getting one version from this group, and I'm getting another version from this group. Somebody's lying in here. Okay? Somebody's making stuff up. Somebody's that's a good a good uh, uh, teaching there to to not always believe everything that's said. You gotta kind of find out what's going on sometimes. Don't jump to conclusions about things. Well, this one said this, and this one said that, and the other one said this. Okay, well, let's sift through this and see what's really happening. Okay, so this is what this man was trying to find out. Gets these different stories, okay, and different things that were said. And the captain had them take uh, Paul, going to take him inside. And as they did, the mob came around uh, and, and became violent again and were saying away with him. So the soldiers had to physically pick Paul up and carry him away to safety. Okay? You got to carry him away. They were going to take him into the castle. Okay, but let's look at what happens in verse 37. And as Paul was led, was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Can thou speak Greek? As he was speaking to the man in the Grecian language. Or not thou? Now listen, this is who this captain of the, of the uh, soldiers thought that Paul was. He said, art thou not that Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? Okay. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was a great silence, made a great silence, he spake unto them in the, in the Hebrew tongue, saying, and we'll get into what he says in, in just a second, okay? But he speaks to this chief captain in the Greek language as they are about to take him inside. And he lets this captain know that not as the captain supposes, he's not some criminal from Egypt that had led a bunch of people astray and was worthy of being beat to death out in public, okay? But he lets them know that he's from a city. He's a Jewish man. They're Jews that are beating him. He's also a Jew, and he is from Tarsus. He said it was no mean city. Now, we have places that have bad reputations, right? Yes. Brother, I told Brother Torres the other day that Brother Williams and uh, Glendale was from Compton. And he said, oh, man, he must have seen some stuff. Why? Because that city has a reputation, okay, of being a lot of crime, a lot of violence. We could probably call that a mean city, okay? And uh, I drove through Stockton one time going to uh, Reading. And I think it's got a bad reputation too. <laughs> and it looked like it. It looked like it looked like a mean city. I said, "Man, this place. I'm glad I'm not stopping here for that." It, it looked sketchy. We say sketchy. We say, uh, you know, it's it's a rough neighborhood, a bad place. It's ghetto, or whatever we say. Well, this is what Paul 
was saying. He said, I'm from Tarsus. Tarsus isn't some uh, wicked city. Tarsus was a, a city that had a good reputation, okay, of being civilized, doing things lawfully, civilized. You know, we're not, we would say, you know, we're, this is not some banana republic. You just can't do that. What do we mean by a banana republic? Some some uh, little rinky dink country down in in you know the jungle somewhere, but they don't have any laws. It's just the dictator says, "This is what we're going to do: kill that guy," and they just kill him. Okay, there's no law. There's no there's no uh, uh, civilized uh, way of doing things. Well, Tarsus was not that way. Tarsus was a part of. The Roman Empire, it was a civilized place. Things were done lawfully. Paul wasn't some uh, uh, anarchist you know, running around trying to, to cause all these problems. Okay, he was a Jewish man, and he asked permission or license. Permission, you got a license, you have permission to drive. Okay, we, we, we have license. And he asked for permission to speak to these people before they took him inside. And he was given permission, okay? And then he begins to speak to them. So we go into chapter 22, okay? Acts chapter 22, and we're going to read about Paul's defense, okay? And this goes along with the end of Acts chapter 8 and Acts chapter 9. A lot of what we're going to read here is almost verbatim to what you're going to read in Acts chapter 9 with some more detail that gives us a broader picture of what took place when Paul got saved. Okay, so uh, we'll keep that in mind. We're not going to turn back and read chapter 9, but if you want to, you can read it and then read this chapter again. And I'll just give you a little heads up. When we get to chapter 26, he's going to do the same thing. Okay, he's going to give his testimony. This is how I got saved. We can relate to that, can't we? Yes. Okay, and this is what he's doing. Say, verse, uh, chapter 22, verse 1, we begin reading there. Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he saith, I am verily a man which is am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city of Cilicia, yet brought up in this city. Paul was telling them, yes, I was born in Tarsus, but I was brought up here in Jerusalem. Okay. Brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. Now, they being devout Jews would have known who Gamaliel is. And we can read about him back in the book of Acts. Uh, I believe it's in chapter 5 we read about him. Okay. But we go on now. Chapter 5, verse 34. You can read about Gamaliel there. He's the one that said, if this is of God, okay, if it's not of God, leave it alone. Nothing's going to come of it in so many words. But if it's of God... We better refrain ourselves because we're going to find ourselves fighting against God. Okay, you remember that when Peter was preaching and they bound him and the others and and uh, took them before the council. Okay, so he he uh, was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous toward God as ye all are, all are this day. And I per persecuted this way of Christianity under the death, binding and delivering into prison both men and women, as also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. Okay, so uh, he tells them, of course, he's from Tarsus, and he was brought up in Jerusalem under the law, learning from Gamaliel who was a member of the Sanhedrin. We believe Paul was a member of Sanhedrin also. And he's letting them know that he's not uh, ignorant of the law, but he was trained in the law and was very devout to the extent. Now, they didn't just... Okay, now let's, let's use an example. Peter was looking for some men to wait on tables. Who did he, who did he choose out? Men full of faith in the Holy Ghost. And we knew that we know that these men also knew the word of God because uh, Stephen ended up preaching. What a wonderful message. Man, go look at his message that he preached. He preached man, the Old Testament. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
and then preach the crucifixion of Christ. Okay? And we also have the example of Philip that we've just been talking about. Yes, Philip did the menial tasks that were needed to be done, but he also knew the word of God. He became an evangelist. Okay? There was a revival in Samaria that we can read about in the book of Acts. Okay? It's the same Philip. Okay? Now, it's not the, not the Philip that was one of the original uh, apostles. Okay, this is the Philip that was one of the deacons that was chosen out of the seven. Okay? So, what are you saying, Pastor? Okay? They wanted people to do things. They chose out people full of faith in the Holy Ghost that knew the word of God, okay? The uh, high priest and the leaders of the Jews wanted to send somebody to Damascus. They chose Paul to send, okay? They gave him letters of authority to go there and to bind these Christians and to bring them back to Jerusalem for them to be in prison, for them to be, uh, uh, some of them were killed. Okay, that's what he says here. Okay, so they also chose a man who was faithful in the Jewish religion. Yes. Okay, it's just a principle. You choose out somebody to do something that takes some responsibility. You choose out somebody that is proven with themselves faithful. Yes. Right? Yes, you know, we let people do things in the church. I don't have somebody walking off the street. My neighbor over here, I love the man. He's a nice man. Dude is a professional musician. Okay. I had him come over and say, hey, can you come check out our piano? See if it's tuned. See if it's is it broken or anything. He came over. Man, he started playing that thing. I was like, Lord have mercy. <laughs> he could play. He said, you this piano? It's got good action. It's tuned right. It's a good piano. Better than mine. He's got an old upright too, he told me. Okay? So he told me that. I didn't say, hey, you can really play. I know you've never been to church. I know you you are not don't claim to be a Christian, but man, you can play the piano. Why don't you come on over to our church and be a musician? No. Because we want people that are faithful to God. Yes. So you hear? Yes. You know, it is an honor that God allows us to be part of his ministry. Yes. Yes. Okay? It's not just, we don't just let anybody do it. Right. People have to prove themselves faithful. If God lets us do something, it's because we deem that you are faithful, a good example. Yes. You hear? Yes. It's really an honor. Yes. Whether it's taking up an offering you guys that stay in the home, I'm just, you know, I let you stay at the home. It's because I trust you. Okay? It really is an honor. Okay? So anyway, anything like that, we get to do something for God. Thank God for it. Okay? So let's go ahead and go on. Paul was faithful. What? Why is he telling him this? Because they, they, they thought, well, he... Paul is against the Jewish religion. He is against Moses. He speaks against. Paul was a better Jew than most of them were. Yes, he was. That's true. He's telling them that. Okay? He's showing them. You guys think I'm just some guy coming in here off the street hearing about this Jesus. I was more devout in the Jewish religion than most of you. And these high priests and these leaders knew it. They're the ones that sent him to Damascus. That's right. Okay? They knew it. Just like with Jesus. They knew there was no fault in Jesus. They made stuff up. They stirred people up. This is what's happening here. Okay? Just telling you, you know, you, you do right. Sometimes things will be stirred up against you. Just keep doing right. Love God. Love people. Okay? Just... God, God's gonna gonna work it out, okay. So let's go on now, verse six, okay. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh to Damascus, so he's going to Damascus again. You can read this in Acts chapter nine. About noon, suddenly there shone a light from heaven. Now this is the middle of the day, noontime. Okay, from heaven, 
a great light round about me. Now this light that shone was brighter than the sun. Okay? And I fell into the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, that's Paul, why persecutest thou me? Okay, let's go on now. Okay, keep reading through verse 11. And I answered, who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, remember we've given you the example before, uh, somebody welding, even in the middle of the daytime, and their eyes get burnt and they can't see. Okay. <clears throat> Being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. So, uh, again, we can read about this in chapter 9. We're not going to say a whole lot about it. It's pretty much self-explanatory, and we've uh, covered it before, okay? Let's go now to verse, verse 12, okay? We know that that uh, he goes into Damascus, okay? And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. In the same hour I looked upon him, and he said, The God of our fathers has chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will, okay, and see that just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now why tarriest thou? Arise, and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord, okay? So, if we go back to the book of Acts chapter 9, and there are people that try to use this verse of scripture that we just read, and, and they try to use that to say that you're saved by water baptism. He was saved by calling on the name of the Lord. Right. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Okay. And really, I believe that he was saved before this, because if you go back into the book of Acts, mm -hmm. I believe that he surrendered to God when he said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Because when he gets, you read the account in the book of Acts chapter 9, when Ananias comes, he prays for him. Not only is his eyes open, but he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. You got to be saved to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay. So we take the two accounts together. And, and uh, uh, so... Uh, this Jewish man that believed that lived in Damascus was sent to Paul to pray for him. And, and again, we know from Acts chapter 9 that he was filled with the Holy Ghost at this time. Okay, so I believe he, as I preached before, when he surrendered, he said, Lord, what will you have me to do? Is when he got saved. Okay, now he, he did call upon the name of the Lord and uh, he was baptized in water just as we have been after we got saved, okay? Let's go to verse 17 now. And we're, we're going to try to finish up. We, we got one minute left. Can I go ahead and finish up the chapter? Sure. Is that cool with everybody? Okay, verse 17. And it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, I remember he's retelling something that has already happened. Yes. Okay? So he uh, left Jerusalem, went to Damascus, got saved. The Lord appeared to him. He got saved. Now, we can read some more detail, okay? Uh, he, he is uh, run out of Damascus. They had to let him down in a basket, okay? But what does he do? He goes back to Jerusalem. That's what he's going to start talking about here. He was in Damascus. Now he's going to go back to Jerusalem. He's in Jerusalem telling them how he came back to Jerusalem after he got saved, okay? You understand what we're saying, okay? It came to pass... That when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance and saw him, saw him saying unto me, saw the Lord. Okay, if we see it here, make haste, and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for thy, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I have imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believe on thee. And when the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed, I was also standing by and consenting unto his death. You see that at the end of Acts chapter 8. 
okay? And kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far unto the Gentiles. So Paul prayed in the temple during his return to Jerusalem from Damascus. And he's in a trance or he's in the spirit. You can also look at uh, the, the apostle Peter, in Acts chapter 10. He was up on the roof fasting and praying and the sheet was lowered down. He was in a trance. The same word is used. He had a vision. He was in the spirit. John was in the spirit and now the Pat was on the Lord's day. But he do he saw the Lord. He had a vision. Okay. So it's a supernatural uh, spiritual uh, act or uh, gift taking place here. They're, they're uh, being given a vision from the Lord. Okay, so he's in, he's in his trance or in the spirit and the Lord appears to him and tells him to leave Jerusalem quickly. And Paul brings up the martyrdom of Stephen. Now, why? Why did he do this? Okay, I don't, I don't really know, but just maybe some things to think about. Maybe he's thinking human nature, you know, God's telling me to go, but, you know, they know that I killed, was involved in the murder, the murder of Stephen, okay? And uh, maybe he's thinking, I'll be okay among the Jews because of what happened with Stephen, okay? And we know because of his reputation from his past uh, endeavors. And we know that he uh, has already been accepted of the Christian brethren. If you go back to Acts chapter 9, verse 27, he came there to Damascus with, or from Damascus to Jerusalem with Barnabas. And they were all afraid. Remember reading about that? Like, oh, this is the man that was persecuting the church. And, okay, and then Barnabas stood up for him and told them how he had been preaching Christ in Damascus. Yes. And they received him. And then later on, Paul and Barnabas goes on the first missionary journey. Okay? So they had already, the, the Christians had already received him. Maybe he's thinking that, you know, Lord, you're telling me to leave, but maybe it's going to be okay because they know that I was involved in the martyrdom of Stephen. And the Lord tells him again, okay, there in verse 21, he tells him again, depart for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Okay. The Lord's telling them again, get out of Jerusalem. Right. When God tells us, brothers and sisters, time to go, it's time to go. Right. Yes. We got to stop reasoning within our mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. but you know, but this and maybe this and maybe it's going to work out this way. Right. God's like, I already told you to go. Like Lot. Get out of here. Right. Yeah, like Lot. Exactly. Well, I mean, what if Paul wouldn't have listened? What if Paul would have stayed there a little longer? Maybe they would have killed him. And we wouldn't have had all those missionary journeys. Right. Yeah, God could have raised somebody else up, but would he have been of a, as, you know, just surmising. Okay, I, I'm really trying to teach a point. When, when the Lord gets ready, you got to move. <laughs> you got to move. God wants you to go to seminary, get ready and go. Don't lolly gag around. Right. Well, you know, I'm going to get out, then I'm going to get a, like a part-time job here at Oceanside, kind of hang out for a while at the home, make a little bit more money. No, you're not. Just go. We're going to pull a Job on you. Not a Job. We're going to pull a uh, Jonah on you. We're going to kick you out the boat. Because if you hang around, you're going to cause some storms. And we don't need it. We don't need to cause our own storms. There's enough storms already. It's true. We don't want to cause any more by keeping people around that God wants somewhere else. Yes. Okay? So prepare. Okay, time goes by fast. Well, I got this much time left. Before you know it, you ain't going to have no time left. It's going to be time to go. Get ready. Okay, you need to start getting ready. Okay, so the Lord tells them again, get out of Jerusalem. And we need to listen. And God tries to direct us, okay? Verse 22 and 24, let's go ahead and finish this up, okay? And they gave him audience, okay? And they gave him audience under his this word, okay? So now he's telling them what happened when he came from Damascus to Jerusalem and these Jewish people that he's talking to are listening to him. And they gave him audience under this word and then lifted up their voices and said, away with such a fellow from the earth for it is not fit that he should live. 
And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust in the air, now this was the outer garment, they'd rip it off. It was a sign of anguish and mourning and, and uh, you know, just uh, anger, okay, or distress or whatever, okay. And it's not fit that he should live. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust in the air, the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging, that he might know wherefore they cried so against him. So the mob is not appeased. They want to kill Paul. Chief captain has him brought inside, and they're going to whip him and find out what's going on. They're trying to get a confession out of him. Like, we're going to torture this dude and get him to speak and see what's going on. Yes. Okay, this is what's going to happen. And so, you know, you think you had it rough today because somebody uh, spoke rudely to you or something. We didn't get we didn't get beat to death and then go, you're going to go get scorched now. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's go on. Verse 25. And as they bound him with thongs, and that's a piece of cloth, okay, a small piece of, uh, thin piece of cloth. Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, is it lawful for you? I mean, look at the wisdom of, of, of Paul. Okay, he uses it here. We're going to see it again in verse 23. He's going to figure out some of these people are Sadducees and some of these are Pharisees. I know how to get out of this. I know how to kind of cause the attention to get off of me. I'll get them uh, arguing with one another. Okay, here he uh, is taken into this, to this uh, castle by the, the captain of the guard, okay? And he says to him, is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, okay, he went and told the chief captain saying, take heed what thou doest for this man is a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, yea. And the chief captain answered, okay, <clears throat> With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, but I was freeborn. Then straight away they departed from him, which should have examined him. Those that were going to scourge him, try to get him to confess to something, left him alone. Okay. And the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman because he had bound him. On the morrow, because he would not have known the certainty whereof he was accused of the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priests and the council to appear and, and brought Paul down and set him before them. And then we're going to have another tumult here in just a moment, okay? The next chapter. Okay, so Paul tells the centurion, he's a Roman citizen, he's about to whip him. And the centurion relays the message to the captain. And he asked Paul if he's a Roman. Paul said, or the, the centurion, or the captain told him, I'm a, I'm a citizen and I purchased this freedom. Okay, he was not born a Roman citizen. He bought citizenship uh, with with money. Okay, but Paul, on the other hand, was a natural born Roman citizen and he had rights that came with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Romans were uh, barbaric militarily. They just wiped people out. They knew how to fight. They studied it. They perfected it. Okay, they didn't just, uh, they actually studied battle and, and tactics and things. Okay. But they, they had a civilized form of government. Some of that they got from the Greeks, mm -hmm. who were civilized people. They had, they had a structure of government. Okay, they had laws. As a citizen, you had rights. They, didn't ju they couldn't just come uh, arrest you for no reason. Right. They had to have a reason. Right. Okay? And we have things like that, too. You know, if they... If they they're supposed to read what your Miranda rights. They're supposed to read your rights to you. They're supposed to do. You have the right to remain silent. They didn't say me all against you. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, you got a right to an attorney, and you know there's there's a due process. Well, there was civil laws in for a Roman citizen. They couldn't just come take this man and beat him up and lock him up for no reason. Nothing had he had not been charged with anything. He'd been accused. But an accusation is not a, a legitimate charge until it's proven. Yes. Okay? And so Paul lets this uh, this captain know this, okay? And it, and it would be it would be the equivalent of us being arrested without proper cause. And the, the, the you know, the, the police could get in trouble for doing that. Okay? 
people, I mean, there's police departments get sued for millions of dollars for wrongful uh, arrest and things like that, or they hurt somebody, wrongful death, or, you know. And I'm not saying I don't I don't believe everything is the way that it's always portrayed to be, but there are instances where there are things that are wrong. Okay, and this is this is what was happening here. Paul, being a Roman citizen, he used his citizenship, okay, to to uh, get out of the situation. And the next day, the captain let him go and called together the Jewish leaders, okay, for Paul to be able to speak with them and them be able to begin to, to voice their accusation and Paul be able to defend himself before them. And we're going to read more about that uh, next Bible study, okay? But, you know, it's a fallacy. Uh, we, we preach about victory. We preach about the blessings of God. But if you think that you're going to serve God and there's not going to be any resistance against you, you know, that's a fairy tale. Yes. That's just not what the Bible teaches. Now we have victory in these times of battle. God gives us victory. Okay, but Pastor they eventually going to kill this man. And he, before they haul his carcass away, he was in the presence of Jesus. Oh yeah. Ultimate victory. Hallelujah. Okay. But God still, even when he was in prison, God used him greatly. Yes. All these letters that were written. Okay. So we're going to stop right there. And again, remember, we're on our way to uh, a revival coming up. Then we're on our way to conference. Mm -hmm. Keep your guard up. Mm -hmm. Be happy. Amen. Okay. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and uh, dismiss in prayer. And Reverend Torres, will you dismiss us, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord, your Father, for the teaching of your word tonight, oh God, for those words, words of hope, of power, of mercy, of grace, oh God, to, to keep us, oh God, in your word, in, in looking unto you, God, to your word, looking to your Son, Jesus Christ, in the perfect time of need, which we need him every single day of our lives, oh God. Thank you for everything, and please bless this fellowship in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.